Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to RPV City Talk. It's always great to have here in our studio the Mayor of RPV, Mayor Jim Knight. Welcome back. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. We get you here every month to update our residents on everything going on in our community. The good and the bad, but I think it's always good. It feels like yes, anyway. Yes, this city is it's always good in some way. <laughs> and it seems right now there are two words making headlines lately, and that is conserve water. Talk about what's happening right now because of California's worst drought. We know the governor has imposed what are being called mandatory water restrictions. It's affecting everybody in the state, including right here in the peninsula. So talk about water conservation efforts and what we need to know and do. Okay, well, maybe it may be helpful to understand what's, what's coming down from, from the governor. Um, he's made a general statement that applies to the entire state. Um, in reality, the, the burden of the water conservation is being put upon 20% of the water users, 80% of the agricultural. Within the 20% of the water users, the conservation measures are being put on. Um, that's a general statement for the entire state. Um, I just read the other day that the uh, Metropolitan Water District is going to put a 15% reduction in their supply to our water supply. And just so people understand how this works. So the numbers are fluid, no pun intended, because we've heard 25%, yeah. I've heard 35% here on the mm -hmm. peninsula. Now you're saying Well, I'm 15%. not sure where that 35 mandate comes in. Um, all I know is the uh, Metropolitan Water District is it's just going to reduce the input by 15%. So basically we have outside sources of water. We have the Colorado River and the uh, LA Aqueduct that comes from uh, Northern California. And there's one major wholesaler down here, uh, Metropolitan Water District, that in turn takes their water supplies and supply, it's a trickle down effect, pun intended. Okay. <laughs> uh, and it, they, they in turn sell it to the various other wholesalers, which in our case is West Basin Municipal Water District. And then West Basin Moder uh, uh, Municipal Water District, in turn, is a wholesaler, sells it to all the retailers. Mm -hmm. The retailer is uh, um, California Water right. Supply, and then they, in turn, sell it to the consumers, us. So um, I, I'm on the governing board of the South uh, Santa Monica Bay Restoration Commission, and so is Gloria, who is the president of West Basin. And we had a little chat, and I asked her, uh, what's your plan for water uh, uh, reduction and so on? She says they're not sure yet. They're still addressing it. So it hasn't actually figured out how that's all going to play out. But the bottom line is we definitely need to start reducing our water yes. use in on the peninsula. That's what residents mm -hmm. need to understand. And you as a city and the need, is also working on plans to come up with a conservation plan. Talk about what the city is going to be trying to do. Yes, the city actually has reduced their overall water consumption by 20% last year. Um, so, and they're continuing to find ways they can do it in the future. Uh, we're analyzing uh, the different types of grasses we have in our parks. Some, some grasses are called dormant, some are non-dormant. So they'll separate those out. The dormant ones, they can stop watering that, are not, that aren't going to be dormant. Um, so they're going to kind of figure all that out. Uh, we're going to look at our facilities and see if we can have water conservation in the facilities we have. Um, we currently have what's called grass cycling. It's, it's a mulching process and uh, that helps retain moisture because the, the grass clippings are kept there. It's kind of like a mulch. It keeps the water in. It has a lot of other benefits too. We don't uh, have to haul away a bunch of grass and, and, and it's a lower carbon footprint and, uh, and, and fewer staff that has to attend that. Um, and so we have a, a multitude of different types of uh, conservation uh, measures we're, we're going forth with. The medians, uh, we're trying to, you know, we're, we have started to put drought tolerant plants in the medians, the highway medians, um, and so we're continuing along with those lines. So that we have a multitude of things we're approaching to continue to conserve. And again, looking at that formula, when you said the governor imposed, which were historic in terms of mm -hmm. this is the first time we've ever had imposed water restrictions in the state ever, which I'm sure we've had droughts in the past, I'm surprised that we've got to this level. Were you, first of all, surprised to see this happen the way it did, or? Well, not surprised. I mean, uh, it is a very serious situation in the state of California. Um, I mean, again, I mentioned the, the uh, putting the entire water conservation um, program on the 20% uh, 
water users. There, that has to be addressed too up there in Sacramento, right. I think. But, <clears throat> but the no, formula not, to get 35% right now, what they first were saying mm -hmm. on the peninsula, you said that formula may not have necessarily been, I don't know, we'll use the word fair or how they well, were figuring okay, that yeah, out. Well, the, okay, the, yeah. The process by which they are trying to compare municipalities is a met, met, metrics uh, comparison that uses gallons per day per capita. So uh, what happens is different municipalities have different land uses. Um, you go down to Torrance or some of the other areas, it's much higher density. Their land use is much higher density. So on the peninsula, we have a whole different land use. It's low density, larger lots. So um, the actual gallons per day per capita is much higher here as a result. That doesn't mean that the individual homeowners inside their home are not conserving water. If you compare the square footage home on the peninsula with anybody else in the Torrance or any place else, similar size square footage home, the water use may be the same or less, depending mm -hmm. on, on the, what the person is doing. It's just that the land use is different. So I think their formula needs to have, they need to drill down and have their formula a little bit more fair, in my, in my opinion. All right. And these restrictions technically start, is it July 1st? Is it like, well, today, should, if, for RPD residents that are paying attention and watching what's going on, should they be like, we need to start conserving right now ASAP? Well, they always should have been oh, conserving right, because they've been in a drought for a while. Um, but if there's other measures they can continue to conserve, that, that's, that's good. But again, that's another unfair about the percentages. Um, uh, for instance, uh, on my home, uh, you know, if I'm taking a shower, I let the water run in a bucket until it warms up, and I have a, a rain barrel, and we have a lot of conservation measures, low-flow sh toilets and shower heads, and we have all that stuff installed, and we're, we're, we're going forth with that already. And to take that baseline and say, reduce it right. another 35%, we're struggling to find where right. we can do that. So the percentages get kind of unfair if, if for those that have been conserving over time, ahead of time. I know from my own personal life with our property, I was saying we don't have any grass. We have all water resistant plants. We don't have any lawn to water. Mm -hmm. Our water bill actually is quite low. So you mm -hmm. say, where do you go from there? Yeah, how do you get your extra 35%? And, um, there's a lot of great information though for resources for residents in the community. I can go to Cal Water um, website and mm -hmm. our own city will have booklets, I guess at City Hall that explain ways and there's, you can get a kit, I guess, through Cal Water mm -hmm. that will you can install uh, water saving shower heads and things like that. Yeah, There's lots true. of different things we can all do. And the web, the city website has a lot of information. We're going to continue to update that. Uh, I put together a little fact sheet uh, that maybe I'm going to have the city look at and kind of give people information what the city's doing and right. how, how the whole system works. I know that our city website is rpvca.gov. Right. We're going to talk about that later on the show because well, it's very exciting. Just, just to explain a little bit more about our water supply system. Uh, uh, in the West Basin uh, uh, Municipal Water District, we import 60% of the water, but 40% of the water we use is local uh, uh, groundwater that's under the, underneath the LA Basin. There's the West Coast Basin and the Central Basin, and it's split by the uh, Newport Ingle Inglewood Fault. And so we, uh, we are, those, the Water Replenishment District and the West Basin are working hard to increase the amount of local water we're using. And, they're opening up the Palos Verdes Reservoir, um, and that I think is part of that plan, is, is the more we can preserve and conserve local water, the less we depend upon imported water, and have a, uh, less of an impact on the drought because we have local storage. I know you mentioned the reservoir um, now being uh, expected to be refilled within two years. It's been in shutdown for some time, mm -hmm. and so that's a good thing to see, obviously, in the community as we watch, watch and wait. Yeah, I, th I think if, if I don't, I haven't talked to them directly, but I, my guess is they're looking to try to uh, have more local storage of water so we are less impacted by what happens in the snowpack of the Sierras. I think, I think that's the, the plan. And I know the Water Replenishment uh, uh, District has a program called GRID. Uh, they're trying to have 100% of the replenishment of the LA Basin water from local recycled water. Mm -hmm. So right now they have to uh, get our local storage somewhat from the other Colorado River and California uh, Central Valley sources. But they're working eventually to get 100% of our local 40% uh, uh, aquifers replenished by local sources. Would you say the bottom line is that uh, consumers are going to expect to see their water bills start to go up? Oh, yeah. I, th I think what's the, we talk about the trickle-down effect. At some point, uh, if Cal, Cal Water has less to distribute, uh, they're going to have to um, 
have the, the consumers conserve, and one way to do that is, is to have different tiers. They have the different tiers, and they may adjust those tiers such that your water bill may go up, yes. And of course, again, talking about some great, I, was, I pulled this nice fact sheet out about just ways, um, about you saying the 20% figure, how you can reduce water use by 20% um, or 30 gallons a day. And just, I was reading, if you just take a five minute shower, you know, you're gonna like use eight gallons of water mm -hmm. less and things like that. And um, obviously fix leaks in your house. And, uh, and if you wash with full loads of laundry, which I think I do 17 loads a week, uh, <laughs> then you can save up to 50 gallons a week. So I don't know where I'm on that one, but uh, at any rate, anything you just wanna add as we move on you know, down that you just, again, this is, this is top priority mm -hmm. in the entire state, obviously mm -hmm. four year historic drought. And so we're going to expect that we're going to I think the function run. of the city in this point is to help the citizens understand what conservation me measures they can have, give them the links to the other departments that have those water conservation measures, and provide the informational service and um, so that they can uh, better meet their, their needs. But this is certainly a topic. You as mayor, when you sit on that committee, you, you're very involved and uh, you'll be able to keep us posted. And, yes. And we'll know more, I think, is this going to continue to develop? Absolutely. It hasn't completely uh, uh, gone out as to what the management plans will be for all these various water companies, so we'll, we'll, we'll see as it unfolds. But like I say, the, um, uh, the, the first wholesaler, the Metropolitan Water District, is asking for a 15% cut uh, in what they're going to, not asking, they're, they're, they're saying they're going to give a 15% cut in what they're distributing which is not 35% to, to us necessarily. So I'm not sure how all this plays out with what Jerry Brown said versus what's really happening in a local water situation. Right. That means we drink two glasses of water during the show, not three. No, <laughs> no we need to keep I get to be hydrated. Keep, 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 keep I know. Keep as soon as I saw that headline, I said I felt dehydrated, <laughs> but no. But it is serious, and uh, yeah. we can all do our part. This is something that we all have to come together and work on as a, as so a community. I, just to share with you, I, was, I had an interview with the New York Times oh, uh, wow. um, about this situation out here. And I think they were targeting Rancho Palos Verdes or the Hill because of this whole thing of, oh, the wealthy people are using more water and being wasteful and all that kind of stuff. And so... As a, part, in a, as a part of that interview, I, I told them, yes, we have a lot of parklands in, in the city we have to maintain. Uh, and by the way, we have 1,400 acres of parkland of which we use zero water. In that preserve. And he, he kind of silenced on the other end of the phone, what? You know? Yes, yeah, so I explained to him, again, land use. What, how are you utilizing your land? And so we have this huge amount of recreational resource that we have planned that it's native habitat that doesn't require any water. So congratulations on that interview. I'm sure you did a wonderful job. Is that in print yet? Can we see it? You know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. This is about a week ago, so I imagine this maybe has already been an article or something. Okay. You know? Well, we got to find it. That, that's great, and uh, but that's interesting. Okay. Um, and so now moving on from, uh, from our water talks to budget. That's big. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now the city council and you and staff are working at the 2015-16 fiscal year budget that you'll be finally uh, voting on to approve in June. Mm -hmm. So between now and then, how is it shaping up? And uh, just kind of an overview of the process and some of the issues that are coming up as you deal with coming up with the budget. Right. Well, every year, obviously, we go this budget season. We go through this every year and um, have to, to adjust our budget according to what our needs are and what our revenue sources are. Um, we're only talking about the general fund. The, the, the capital improvement fund is pretty much a program is, is pretty much um, established. Um, we did have a surplus last year for our budget, but um, you know don't go out spending it right away because last year we didn't have a city manager, which is a large part of expense, and we had a low staffing. So uh, we have to keep that in mind. Um, um, so we, we can't just go out and spend that willy-nilly. Um, and, you know, every year we, we do accomplish a balanced budget. And, and fiscally, we're very prudent in the city. And, uh, you know, I think it's, 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 this is the, the mandate of the council going forward as well. Uh, we use what's called a hybrid, uh, uh, zero-based budget. And I'm sure you understand that. You use that in your home all the time, right? I, that's a word we throw it every night when we look at our wall and how much money we have, which is based on... Actually, it's not that different. Hybrid zero-based budgeting. It's not home. that different. Uh, it's actually, it's a, the, the zero-based budgeting is a concept used from private industry. And um, uh, if, if, if a particular company is uh, like an upstart and they don't know which way they're going and so on, every year they have to look at their budget and just say, 
we're, we're taking product B and throwing that out, we're starting product C and we're going to put everything. In. So they hit, sometimes they have to completely go through the whole budget top to bottom. Um, but um, uh, in terms of government, it, 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 that alone is, is, it doesn't apply too well because we are providing services right. on an ongoing basis that has to be keep consistent. We're not just going to suddenly say, oh, we're not going to use a sheriff. We're going to get a private uh, you know, company. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we have certain services we have to keep at a certain level, certain staffing at a certain level. So what hybrid means is there are some non-discretionary basic functions. We just keep the way they are. We can, mod we can kind of tweak them a little bit. You know, sheriff, we might include, include patrol here or there or whatever. But basically, fundamentally, they're there. And then uh, there are certain discretionary things that we look at. Um, one example we looked at just last meeting, <clears throat> just to kind of give a head, heads up to staff which way we want to go. The question comes up, do we want to pay down our uh, unfunded pension liability? It's a question. Do we want to do that? Do we want to not do that? Um, and that's a discretionary thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's currently targeted at about $7 million, but that's over a 30-year period. Um, we decided not to do that. Uh, it's not a, the $7 million is, is not that, that huge an unfunded pension liability relative to other cities. Uh, San Jose has a $2 billion wow. unfunded. So in other words, we're not doing too bad that way. And the other thing is, if you go ahead and pay it down now, and um, they have all that money in their hands, and then suddenly the pension liability reduces, we've got $7 million they're hanging on to that mm -hmm. we could have used in our city. Right. So there's certain uh, uh, things that w it's, it's, it's not going to kill us to have the uh, $7 million uh, unfunded pension liability right now. It's over a three-year period. Um, so we've decided not, not to pay it down. So those are the kind of discretionary things we look at and, and try to analyze and see what, which way we want to go, where we want to spend our discretionary money. Okay. And the budget this year is close to $30 million for the city? It's, yeah, right now, 29 to $30 million, right? And I was wondering, where did, what's our biggest expenses that, that this city has? I would say if you wanted to pick one, it would be the sheriff a contract. Mm -hmm. um, that's in the $4 million range. Um, okay. And, um, um, and where do we get most of our revenues from? You look Most of the revenues, if you look at a pie, would be from property taxes. Yeah. Although we struggle because we only get 6% of the property taxes. Uh, that's quite a bit lower than other comparable cities. So we struggle with that. Uh, we have a lot of infrastructure, a lot of roads we, we have to maintain. Uh, we don't get revenue from that. Uh, we maintain all the roads that go up to the Rolling Hills Peninsula Center. Mm -hmm. but we don't get any revenue from that. So okay. we have additional expenses. We have a landslide area that, that's costing us a lot to maintain a road. So we, uh, and, and per capita, uh, we have one of the lowest tax revenues. We're a low tax base city, basically, per capita compared to any other of the Hill cities. A that's lot of cities in South Bay, we're low per capita. So we, we do a fantastic job considering the amount of money we actually mm -hmm. uh, tax and, and bring all in. Right. So this is going quite smoothly at this point, no big challenges? And I don't think there's any real big challenges. There's certain policy issues we have to look at. Do we want to uh, you know, increase sheriff services here or there? Um, um, there's other issues uh, with the MS4 permitting. How are we going to handle that? Because that's a, coming down the pike of a big expense. We have, we'll have to deal with projects with that. I'm always on the lookout for grants for that, so hopefully we can tap into some grants and take that off our, the, our backs and so mm -hmm. on. So it's, it's, it's nothing really controversial at this point. All right. I guess next in the budget process, I noted down that I'm at your May 5th council meeting, you'll have a hybrid zero-based budgeting exercise for right. the community wants to get involved and watch, That's right. watch how that and goes. And we'd love to have community input. Uh, if they see there's certain things that they want to have services for and we want to hear about that mm -hmm. and see where we can fit that in. And one thing you mentioned last year, we uh, with the uh, news with the city manager not being here, and we have replaced our city manager. We've got mm -hmm. Doug Wilmore, who's been on the job mm -hmm. since March, and doing a great job. So I just wonder how that transition's going, and uh, you know, sort of for him, what you see challenges as he's taken on the new city manager position. Yeah, well, Doug, I think is working out great. Um, I've had uh, ongoing discussions with him on upcoming budget uh, issues or agenda items, uh, community issues. Um, uh, so far, um, we've been on the same page in a lot of, lot of things, and he's brought in some other things for himself that uh, um, I think are improving the city. 
I think it's going to work out great. He comes with a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. He was a, a public administrator uh, for Utah in a whole county area. He was city manager of, of uh, El Segundo, and he took Bell, that was almost insolvent and bankruptcy, and bought to put it back to a surplus. Right. And so he comes with a lot of experience with this, and so I, it's, um, I think he's going to be very good for the city. I think even award-winning experience, he's, he was... Uh Recognized for his for being a superior city manager and, and, and right. effective, and it was an ethics award as well. Yeah, because yeah, so. he had some ethical challenges in one of the one of the cities, and so and he and he uh, uh, got an award for, yeah. for what he for he, what he did with that. Okay, so I'm so. Glad, glad that's working out, and uh, we again keep welcoming here. He's doing a great job. Um, one thing you did mention as we were talking about budget too was uh, that one of the biggest price tags comes with our sheriff's contract, and with that, I just curious. Just sort of updating the residents on discussions about whether, you know, with this, we've heard about the uptick in burglaries, you know, just efforts in terms of increasing sheriff's patrols or whatever, what's going on with that? Mm -hmm. Well, we are looking at that, and we have heard from the residents that, they're, that they, they uh, there's several people that have had burglaries and they're very concerned about it. Uh, there's a perception that it's increased. Actually, the crime stats for the city for burglaries has gone down from last quarter to this quarter, but nonetheless, you know, the important thing is that people feel safe and feel that we're doing something about mm -hmm. it. So we are talking to, to the Sheriff's Department to see what we can do with our budget uh, to uh, uh, take an already safe city and make it safer. Mm -hmm. So we're in the, in the process of doing that. In fact, that'll be coming up, I think, our next agenda anyway, have a topic right. on that. Uh, I know at your uh, last meeting, uh, you had to talk about video camera proposal to put up on a light pole with La Rotunda at PB mm -hmm. Drive South. That came up at the March 17th meeting. So what's going on with that? And that, and what would that accomplish? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a, a complex thing that we were trying to trying to do. Um, the, the, obviously, the idea is that we would have some kind of video surveillance there that the sheriffs could tap into if they right. needed to. Um, there, there's two different types of cameras we're looking at there. One is just a ongoing looping video camera. Um, the other one is. And it would recognize license plates as the no, that's, that would that's, not, that's the, there's a different camera, uh, a different system they would have. I okay. mean, uh, the camera may be the same, but this different recording system they have uh, that would be the APLR, the uh, uh, license recording system. And <clears throat> they could uh, tap into that and uh, it helps them um, find uh, people that, that have stolen cars or whatever, okay. uh, or they could be. Um, cars that involve in some kind of crime in the city. So, but that has a little bit different uh, um, implementation. It's a little more expensive camera, a little more expensive system, and it gives more immediate results. So this the, video camera wouldn't be doing that? The, the regular, just like the home security cameras, okay. is kind of what it is, and it has a loop and it records it, but it's, it's time dated, so it's tamp, stamped so that if there's a crime that happened at 3 p.m. over here, they could look and see within a certain time frame if there's cars that uh, they could recognize coming in and going during that time. So they could they can timestamp it. The question is, how long to keep the data? Uh, it is imposing on uh, citizens' rights and, and uh, privacy issues, and how long to keep the data? What, what happens with the data? That's those are things we need to still work out. All right, and one thing you were saying is obviously, as mayor, you speak with Captain Bolin and talk about the needs of, of the community and just kind of seeing where we really need to go and what's going to make the most sense to again make the residents feel safe and to make sure we bring mm -hmm. bring make sure that we're at the safest level possible. Yeah, okay. well, part of that I, I talked, to, talked to Captain Bolin years ago and uh, when we first met, and we both agree that primary is communicating to the residents. Not only telling them what, what the city and the sheriffs are doing, but hearing from the residents their concerns and, and getting that communication line going. So that's very important. Aside from that, in terms of what we actually hire the sheriffs to do, what we pay for, yes, we need to talk to the sheriff and find out what is the most effective use of any kind of additional funding we're going to give them. Uh, it, it may or may not be patrol cars. It may be a private investigator we hire to, to follow through on these crimes and actually get these uh, people in, in jail and so on so they don't commit more crimes. 
We have to check with the sheriff's department and make sure we understand um, what the best bang for the buck is for us for it to make it as safe as possible for our residents. Right, and I, the council's having that dialogue constantly. Mm -hmm. Certainly, Councilmember Mizetich is suggesting mm -hmm. possibly bring on more cars, and mm -hmm. you all. There's also the volunteer patrol. Do, do uh, we? We've asked that the sheriff kind of increase their recruitment for that. And if you, at the whale of the day, there was a whole booth dedicated mm -hmm. to uh, trying to recruit uh, volunteer patrol. So we're, we're, we're trying to increase that and cr increase the personnel with that. And uh, that's obviously um, a very low cost issue. Uh, we might provide cars for them or something, but uh, you know, they don't have a high salary or anything. So um, they're volunteers. So we're trying to find ways, the most efficient ways and cost effective ways to bring the maximum amount of security to our residents. All right, but again, residents just to, to continue to be diligent if you you know, see something, you're supposed to say something. Exactly, and, and, and you bring up a very good point, and that is that is going to make the communities the most safe, is, is if you're aware of your community, you have neighborhood watch. If you don't have neighborhood watch, be aware of what you see. Lock your cars. Don't leave valuables in your car. I mean, all the basic things that people still, right. at this point, still need to be educated about. So those, those are probably, it's kind of like water conservation. It's just education can achieve some of the maximum amount of uh, right. effect. You mentioned water again. That brings me to my next subject, <laughs> and uh, not so much about water conservation, but water quality um, regarding uh, improving water quality and controlling pollution from stormwater. That mm -hmm. was a big topic of discussion at your uh, last council meeting because um, staff had presented um, an ordinance and a Green Streets policy resolution. So for a resident that was tuning in during that item, explain <laughs> what's going on there and what the council is trying to accomplish, accomplish regarding um, improving and controlling stormwater runoff. Right. Well, the city is under a whole new slew of regulations under the Water Quality Control Board. Um, one of those is we have we have to comply with an, what's called MS4 permitting, which stands for Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System. One of the things that the Regional Water Quality Control Boards like is for cities to come up with a, of a uh, implementation of a plan, a management plan, stormwater management plan. And what we have done in our, in our city, uh, we he, we're, have a joint um, called Enhanced Watershed Management Plan. And we join with the Rolling Hills Estates, uh, Palos Verdes Estates, uh, and a few other county in LA City and so on, um, so that we manage our watersheds. And, and that's the way it should be. Originally, what, what I complained about to the Water Quality Control Board is they originally they had these watershed area groups that they had formed. And it had nothing to do with watersheds. Mm -hmm. They just kind of looked at a map and said, well, let's put this together. <laughs> and so I said, no, you really need to have the municipalities that have the watersheds work together on a watershed management plan. So that, actually, that message got through, and I, they, they're now really wanting to go with you know, watershed management plans. Part of the requirements of that is if we have an enhanced watershed management plan, they allow us to take certain best management practices uh, to address our water quality. And instead of fining us $10,000 a day for an exceedance at some monitoring station. And so part of that is the limited impact development ordinance, green streets. Um, we have various other um, landscaping ordinance we have in place. Um, and we have, we're designing certain kind of spile swells and so on with the new uh, water, catch, water catch, capture uh, program. Um, so, in, in, you, in doing this, we're able to be in compliance with our MS4 permitting and not have to have these heavy fines on us okay. if we're in this exceedance. So that's part of the plan. Uh, the LID ordinance and the uh, Green Streets ordinance is Green Streets ordinance is having certain cat type of catch basins at the stormwater inlets from streets. Mm -hmm. They have screens. They have catch basins that capture uh, trash and things that go out. It doesn't. It doesn't address um, soluble like oil and things like that. Mm -hmm. Those are a little more advanced. Those would be what we call biofilters. <clears throat> but we do have, we're going to be implementing uh, just catching the actual trash and things like that so it go, doesn't go down into the ocean. Okay. So that's moving forward. Yes, yeah, so moving forward and we're in constant contact uh, you know, with the regulatory agencies and making, making sure we have a staff on board. We have a consultant that helps us uh, just make sure we're in compliance and with that. Okay. And we share, we share the costs proportionally to the amount of watershed with the other cities. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, what goes, what happens next in the process with that? Just sort of implementing the measures and... Yeah, implementing the measures um, 
and uh, just con continuing trying to find ways of uh, treating the storm water before it gets into, into the storm drains, um, capturing it. I was just at a presentation um, at the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Commission this week, and the Culver City has implemented a whole program um, that they've taken entire areas and they're capturing the water and keeping it on site. In other words, they have these infiltration swales and so on, and it doesn't get into the storm drain to begin with. So that's further step down the road. <clears throat> we can be working on things like that. Um, and uh, the other thing is to use best science. Um, there's another report I saw the other day about Topanga Canyon, where they're able to identify uh, you know, where the source of the bacteria level is. Is it human? Is it dog? Is it seagull? And they did a whole study, and they found that it was mostly in the Topanga Canyon area, dog and seagull. So that good science helps us guide right. our, our program such we're not wasting a lot of money doing a whole lot of water treatment when, in fact, yes. it's just a matter of enforcing no dogs on the beach or something. Okay. You know, that, that kind of thing. So, so we have to make sure we use good science going down forward. That's interesting. Yeah. Of course, everything we're talking about, this, the residents can always go on the city website because we have so much information about all these different programs we're looking under each department in the city. It's rpvca.gov, and it's mm -hmm. a new city website. Let's move it on is. and talk about that. It's very exciting. Yes, it, looks it is. Great. It's, it's, it looks great. It's got a nice interface. I think we still need to work on getting the search engine such that you can find specific things. Uh, we're working on that um, and making sure it's easy for people to use. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be much more user friendly and mm -hmm. uh, easier to access information right. for people. Of course, from, you, from the mayor and the city council's point of view, you can find out when all their meetings. You can watch their meetings. Mm -hmm. um, grab the agendas and, uh, and then you can yell on. at the TV when you watch the meeting. It's, it's up to you. What if you want to? Yeah, <laughs> you can also, of course. I love that there's a nice tab at the top. Transparency. We mm -hmm. talk about that always. That's the big word. And uh, you can see everything from what people are making uh, that work at city hall mm -hmm. to. You know, everything's right there. and mm -hmm. um, it's, Contact and numbers. Of course, you can find out about RPV TV if you want to see what's right. scheduled and that's on what's there going on. Yeah. And uh, But just in general, there's obviously been a focus with the information technology needs in the past year. There's a new IT director, Dan Landon, um, and there's just a lot going on with trying to meet the city needs. There is the uh, selection of an IT services provider. You're mm -hmm. looking into a GIS coordinator. What is what should the residents realize about what you're trying to accomplish, the goals with IT in this city? Well, if you look around the world, uh, technology is constantly uh, increasing, and there's a lot of software, a lot of uh, programs available to make cities run more efficiently. Um, so we, we are improving our IT in our city, uh, information technology in our city. Um, as we go along, we have now we have Dan Landon to kind of head that off. And um, one of my goals down the road is if somebody walks in for a building permit and they make a payment to the community development department, finance department gets it immediately. It's all, it's all you mm -hmm. know, kind of on a software system that just everything is, is automatically placed where it needs to be right now. The way it's set up, uh, the, the community development department person has to get a list of things, bring the paper up to the, right. uh, you know, the budget department and the uh, finance department, and uh, they have to kind of manually input it. So this, this, that's that's my eventual goal is to, is to have it all kind of very automated, uh, and to be more have, efficient. Be for more efficient. We may have online applications available for for uh, developers, and I think we're in the process of doing that now. Um, and understanding what their needs are. So we do a lot of things online. Don't have to come to the counter and say, what do I need to do mm -hmm. here, there? That kind of thing. So Sign yeah. up for a program through Rex and Parks. Right, it right, right and Parks. Yeah, right, right there. So we're constantly improving that. The GIS system is kind of a separate system. It's a separate set of expertise on that. Um, the, well, let's see, how do I explain? It? Graphic information system is what it means. Everybody uses it almost every day in their own home. If you go to Google Earth, which I think a yes. lot of people use, okay, or your, or your mapping system, if you have a different mapping system, there'll be little layers, there'll be little different things you can check off and say, I want to find where the restaurants are, I want to know the name of the streets, I want to know what the topography is, I want to know 
what does the ocean look at over here? Right. You know, the, 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 Every the time news. on my phone and I'm trying to do something, it says, can I use your location? It's yeah, like, right, location. No, 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 I don't want you to know where I am. But no. when you look at the map, no. you, may, you may say, find a restaurant for me or something. Well, right. those are all GIS layers. It, it, and the city is no different. Although ours is a little more sophisticated and more specific to the city, we have a map of the entire city. It shows the, the property boundaries. And then it, you can go to that map and say, uh, where are all the storm drains? Uh, where are the city-owned sewer systems? Where are the county-owned sewer, sewer systems? You can do all these layers, and we have thousands of layers that uh, currently PB and the Net has provided for the city. The, the PB and the Net has currently provided the GIS service for the city, and uh, it's a very robust, robust uh, GIS system, more than, than other cities. Um, next level did an analysis, and they said it's a high level of service we have here with our GIS. So that's that's how the GIS works. So that. Uh, maybe the public works wants to find out, well, where are these types of storm drains? And they can go right to that and it'll pull it right up out of some layer. Uh, finance wants to know, well, gosh, how many storm drains or how many sewer lines do we have to fix here? And then they can go calculate, oh, this is going to cost us because they can pull up immediately where everything is on this map. Um, the way it kind of works is there's, we hire a service to the LA County that flies these planes over um, Rancho Palos Verdes. And then they have special types of cameras and data that give GI, GPS, global positioning uh, sites, systems, uh, sites, where each, each area is located. So then we can layer on top mm -hmm. of that what our other input is on top of that. So every department in the city really depends on information to get their jobs done. Yes. Getting to that point, is that yes, critical? Yes, it is. Yeah. And, and when you say depend on, it, it'll, it will make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And so right now that position, the, the city's searching for the GIS coordinator. Mm -hmm. I know you mentioned mm -hmm. PV and the net at the last council meeting. You want to make sure that as the if people are going to go out, it's going out to bid, that, that they would be included right. in the process. I, I want to make sure we understand what our current provider is giving us, and then I want to get the best bang for right. the buck. That's my bottom to, line. You've you know. got to look at it all like Yeah, that. look at it all and say, is, does this make sense here or with them, or does it make sense over here? Yes. And, and to be able to fully analyze what's the best route right. for Right. You want to look at all your options. Right. And, uh, Excellent. Well, we'll stay uh, tuned on that one. And again, just to get back to that city website, we keep saying it, it's rpvca.gov. Mm, that's right. Yeah. All right. Check it out often. And uh, also, by the way, while we're talking about that and information is uh, we have a great Facebook page, too, you know, the city of Rancho mm -hmm. Palos Verdes that you can also go to mm -hmm. to get all kinds of information. And you'll find out what's happening in the city. And with that, we're at that part of the show where I think the fun part to talk about just announcements that you might have as mayor and just very good excellent things that are going on, like the big announcement at Trump with mm -hmm. the PGA. You want to talk about that? Yes. You're yes. a big man on campus along with the Donald. <laughs> yes. I had to give a little joke to him about uh, oh, a previous experience he had with another uh, golf course. Well, at, at one point there was a, a, a big PGA thing that he was involved with where a, a major golfer had got angry and threw his, threw right. his club into a pond. And so during and they this, had a diver come and get it out. They had a diver actually. come. Well, actually, or something like that. The, the, the the golfer just let it go, but Donald decided to have a little fun with it. Right. So he got a diver, and then he presented it to him at another right. uh, uh, part of the different uh, PGA tour. So what I said to Donald is, I said uh, during during this conference meeting, I said to him, I said, well, you know. Um, you're going to have to have more than just a diver here. You're going to need the Coast Guard because half of your golf course is along the ocean. Right, you know, right. To well, find yeah, these, exactly. <laughs> these, these you were just trying clubs. to weave water back into the conversation, <laughs> weren't you, Mayor? But no, so but that's no, it's, big. It's, it's a major, major thing. It's, it's, uh, it's a major PGA event. Um, in October. And, uh, in October. And um, so we're looking forward to it. And we're, we'll make sure, we have to make sure we coordinate with them so it's not an issue with parking and traffic and all that kind of stuff. So I happen we'll, to live across the street. Yeah, which, no. so we'll make sure that, 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 that we, we address all that. But of it course, should be very exciting. Yeah. yeah, Trump National has come a long way. And the fact that uh, it'll be great for the, for the city to have that here and uh, continues to put our community on the map. In, in a good mm -hmm. way. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, excellent. Well, so that was fun. And uh, so that's the week of October 17th. Then there was Whale of a Day, mm -hmm. uh, 31st Annual. Um, second year that it now is being run, uh, the first Saturday of April. It used to be the first Saturday of March, but mm -hmm. we've got used to that change. And, you know, the weather was gorgeous, and it was a great turnout. You were there. Yes, uh -huh. it was wonderful. And if you remember, last year we had a little bit of rain. It kind of put a a damper on the, yeah. uh, the situation. So I think they decided to move it out a little bit to kind of avoid some of that issue. 
Um, and also, I think there's some other events. There's some Boy Scout events or oh, some yeah. other. Well, back in March, the big opening of baseball that baseball, day. Baseball, right, yeah. So I think that's another reason so they th changed it. It turned out to be great. There was a great attendance. Um, and uh, Mona Dill and the staff and everybody does a fantastic job putting this all together. Exactly. The docents were, very, were, were also part of it all. Great displays. What I loved about it is we, the displays we have and the, and the booths we have are community related. But also, they had all the wildlife uh, organizations that are on the hill here. So um, mm -hmm. Ann Lynch has her wildlife rehab, and she had live owls there the kids could see. Right. And so it's so wonderful for the children to get back in touch with nature, really. Absolutely. Get off those computers and get out there and see what the you know, real world is out there. There's a, a lot of beauty out there. Yep. The city, of course, we're saying co-host it with the uh, docents from Los Sereno de Point Vicente who do mm -hmm. a marvelous job um, and volunteering at the Interpretive Center. So you get it all. You mean mm -hmm. you get to be outside and even though the Peak whale season is slowly ending. There were still some whales oh, yeah. there were some migrating sightings. back home. I heard up that north. bell ring several times. Yeah, they the saw some whales, and yeah. then you get to go in and have a nice tour. And again, just like you said, those educational booths. Mm -hmm. It definitely was a family favorite for all my kids. You know, growing up. Oh, it's up. great. It's wonderful. And um, you learn a lot. They even have the bouncy they provide. Yep. For, for the you got it. You got it all, and it's that's a jewel. Uh, but it's a place to go all year round. Mm -hmm. You want to go check that PVIC out every day of the year. Um, what else is happening? We have. Um, Coming up Wednesday, April 29th, I want residents to know that the city is hosting with staff the Anonymous Fraud Waste and Abuse Hotline. It's a community town mm -hmm. hall meeting that's going to be at PVIC mm -hmm. from 6 to 9. And I guess so that people can understand what's going on with that hotline, which, of course, you as a council have been discussing for some time. Yes. No, we, it's the introduction. Uh, uh, I think I think Jerry Dehovic, Councilman Dehovic, uh, introduced it. And, uh, yeah, it's something that's just one of those additional services we provide for the citizens to make sure they... They know that uh, if there's something they feel is not a, going on properly, they, they have an a anonymous uh, hotline to, to contact. So mm -hmm. I, I don't expect it to be used a whole lot. I think our cities run pretty well, but, you know, it's there and it's, it's, uh, it's available and uh, so people can feel that there's always a place they can go if they have some issues. All right, so that's Wednesday, April 29th, and just it's public is welcome. Mm -hmm. Uh, anything you want to add as we start to wrap it up? Any other mayor's announcements? You are all over the place as mayor. Right You're on a million different committees, and and I and I'm, I'm doing a great job. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, nothing more. I mean, you really you really covered it very well. Um, there's there's a lot of regional things that I'm dealing with uh, South Bay Cog, and uh, um, we have a uh, we're going th forward with our street light inventory and a pilot program for LED conversion mm -hmm. to some of the parks. You're saving us some money there. I'm so I'm doing. I've already, you know, by getting this study going, we we've already found uh, quite a few street lights that we're being charged for I that know. didn't exist. So we have an immediate savings right there. But we're going to continue forward with that with that and uh, convert the uh, uh, existing park lights uh, to LED as a pilot program. Uh, we need to be kind of careful with that because LEDs have a different color to them, mm -hmm. a different intensity. But I think it actually will be an improvement if we do it right. We have to do it right. Uh, and also possibly look at the feasibility of acquiring the Southern California Edison lights and owning them ourselves instead of having to pay them their, their service fee, which is kind of a random number they come up with. Okay. Uh, but we, it may or may or not be feasible. We have, we have to look at that. So that's one thing we're moving forward with with that. All right. Well, we'll see that maybe moving forward yeah. then. Okay, well, that is going to do it for us here at RPV City Talk. It's great, again, to have Mayor Jim Knight here with us, bringing us up to speed and all that's going on. And I'm, again, I'm going to end with two, two words, conserve water. And, uh, again, thanks for joining us. I'm Liz Brown-Swanson. See you next time.